and it truly is important and I have you don't have to read anything that's on there really as my my beautiful drawing of the colon and the small intestine and see it almost looks like a brain doesn't it yeah. kind of yeah. I didn't really try for it but it does right it really does um, Actually, if you think about it, there is so much surface. So the small intestine and the large intestine are so connected. We cannot really separate the two because the small intestine is where all the digestion happens and the, the absorption. And the small intestine is about 23 feet long, so that's a lot. But what happens in there, there are these little tiny, little tiny villi on the small intestine. So it's, it's not just straight line. There are all these beautiful villi which are they're full of lymph nodes and lymph and blood vessels and that's where all the absorption happens so actually that surface there's so much surface in the small intestine that it's m larger than our skin it's actually more surface in the small intestine than on the skin and then all the which is at that point is called chymus all, all the digestive food then moves into the large intestine which really does go from just like that, like a little U. And the primary um, function of the large intestine, which is only about five feet, really, there's no digestion happening and absorption anymore. It's all about elimination. So it's this amazing protector, really. It's this amazing protector because it needs to get out what comes in through the food. And there is a lot of toxins coming in through our food. There's a lot of bacteria coming in through our food. And there's also a lot of metabolites. And again, I'm not going to go into the liver pathways and detoxification, but there are a lot of metabolites of our own metabolism that actually become toxic and need to get eliminated. So this beautiful colon needs to take care of all of that. And it needs to do that every single day, and it needs to do that in a very powerful way, because if that does not happen, that's where illness starts. So let's talk a little bit about where does illness start in the colon, how, and, and what happens there. So we're going to go, and there's a lot of information, so I'll try to kind of break it a little bit. But if you think about toxins, and I won't go much into that if you're really interested into more toxins. I have a, a seminar that's online seminars. You can email me. It's about an hour. I can send it to you. You're going to find a lot and learn a lot of information about all the different toxins that we actually have in the environment. It's not to scare you. It's just to have you be aware that we have about 84,000 different toxins in our environment right now. In 1976, it was 62,000 only. And at that point, they tried to create a, a law, a, 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 you know, protection act, and that really didn't, it didn't work out. It's, it's like these toxins, they're, we don't know how to regulate them, we don't know how to test for them, we don't even know what they do in the body. So to know that there are a lot of toxins that we do have to kind of be aware, and the first thing is to avoid them. And um, if you have any questions at the end, I'll, I'll get to that. But the first piece is to avoid them. And the second piece is to make sure that our amazing body actually can get rid of as many of them as possible. What is happening in our medical, in our world period, especially in the United States? You know, colon cancer actually is the number two cancer in the United States. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really staggering. There are mm, 56,000 people die every year from colon cancer in the United States, and 120,000 are diagnosed every year, only in the United States, and about 600,000 people worldwide do die. But the uh, United States is really at the top, even though we have so many amazing procedures and uh, prevention techniques and, and, and um, you know, like colonoscopy, there's still a lot of cancer happening. And why is that? It truly is this, you know, prevention is not just doing colonoscopy and, and waiting to, do I have it? Yeah, I want to make sure I don't have it. It's what can I do to never have a problem, to never have this illness to worry about. And you have heard a lot about fiber, but it is not just, it's not that simple. It's it's the whole concept that I'm trying to kind of make, have you make friends with your gut. Is because when, when I was in medical school a um, long time ago, 
it was all about, like I was saying, this this knowledge and as much information as possible as to how to diagnose and what the blood work needs to look out, look at, at, you know, this looks a certain way and therefore you have this diagnosis. So if you have this diagnosis, you get this medication and if this doesn't work, you get another one and, and if that doesn't work, we have surgery or, or we have that. And, and really kind of progressing in medicine as far as the mind so much where people today are surviving that could not have survived 100 years ago by you know doing transplants and by getting artificial hearts and our medicine is just so amazing yet somewhere in the in the in this beautiful growth we have lost the connection to the truth really and to the core of where illness originates. And, and really, I would like to try to bridge these two somehow, and, and it's hard to do, so I'll talk about them separately. One piece is the energetic piece. It really is, and I'll come back to it. We cannot separate that. But then there is this other big piece with the physical body where if we really look at what is happening in the colon today of most people and how we have totally kind of pushed it at the back burner as the beginning of illness, we would be like, wow, there's something to really do. If every, um, I don't know if you, how many times you've been to your primary care doctor and how many times have you been asked, um, do you go to the bathroom every day? Have you actually ever, has your primary care ask? No, you get your blood pressure checked, right? Your heart gets listened to, your blood work gets looked at. And then, you know, do you have headaches, do you sleep, maybe you get asked that, but did you go to the bathroom today and yesterday and the day before and how many times? That really needs to become the number one question. And here's why. Because there is, actually I'm going to read this to you because it's very interesting. Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, a medical doctor, um, from Michigan. Long time ago, it's like more than 20, 30, 40 years ago, he says, of the 22,000 operations I have personally performed, I have never found a single normal, healthy colon. And of the 100,000 that were performed under my jurisdiction, not over 6% were normal. So, what actually we do not realize, and it is, it, it is not to scare you, really. It is not to scare you. It is just to have you be aware that there is something to be done and that you have the power to do it. You don't have to take medication for something that you can do yourself. And that is that our, especially in the United States, especially what happened with our diet, you know, processed food, sugar, lots of meat, coffee, alcohol, smoking, um, low food, sugar, sugar, low, uh, low, um, low fiber diet, stress, all these extra, you know, 84,000 toxins, um, all of that affects the colon. So what is happening is the colon is actually getting impacted and stuck. And first of all, healthy bowel movement is a must. And what is a healthy bowel movement? So in traditional medicine, so far, if you have more than three, three or more bowel movements a week, you're good. What do you think about that? That's not enough, right? That's not enough. It doesn't make sense. What, com what goes in has to come out. And it has to come out at pretty much the same amount and at a pretty good speed. So. Certain food takes a little bit longer. Let's say meat, for example, can take up to 36 to 40 hours to go through our digestive tract, which can you imagine 40 hours for a meat to actually, what, what happens, right? It putrefies, ferments, takes a little bit. Something like an apple or a liquid spirulina, it's almost instant, it's just a few hours. So all of these things that I said are happening and have been happening in, in you know, in our actually in our developed society, we have access to that, and it's it's you know it's the great thing to do. The colon has been suffering, unfortunately, and few things happen there. Um, this is kind of like a not a perfect picture, <laughs> but.
but a picture and I tried. The colon actually has a little, they're called haustra. It's, it's not straight. It has these little kind of like sacs. And it, with its brain, what happens is it moves, the peristalsis is the movement of the muscle. It, it moves, you know, it liquefies everything and actually the colon absorbs the water and it, it, as it's liquid, it kind of blends it together and it moves it out through these movements of peristalsis. And these little sacs here, they also do move, but what can happen if there is a lot of inflammation, so if we have a lot of toxins, low, um, low fiber, lots of meat, that creates stress on the wall of the, of the colon. It's trying to protect us from these toxins, so it starts creating mucus. It starts creating mucus, and mucus is actually a way to protect our, ourselves from the toxins going in, and it creates mucus. And then for breakfast, and it creates mucus for lunch, and it creates mucus for dinner, and it keeps creating mucus, and the mucus is getting stuck. It's not actually moving. It's something called the mucoid plaque that can happen that actually, even though you have a bowel movement every day, can still be stuck on the, on the walls of the colon. Again, it's not to scare you, it's just it does happen more than we realize. And according to some of these doctors, it actually is very, very common. So first of all, healthy bowel movement is after every meal. I don't know if you've heard that, but that actually is the, the healthy bowel movement three times a day. It's three times a day, and it is, uh, and I'll talk about that, it is a well-formed well -formed bowel movement. So it looks like the size of the colon, and it comes usually in one piece. It's not too hard, not too soft, comes out easily without straining, without, you know, without any cramping. So that's a healthy bowel movement. And after every meal, really, three times a day, the food should come out. Because as the food enters from the small intestine to the large intestine, the colon, it actually creates a reflex that starts pushing the whole colon and it creates defecation, right? So three times a day is healthy. Once a day is the minimum that, that we still need. Most people don't have that. You probably are health conscious, so you probably have a great bowel movement. I have so many patients that come to me, and when I ask them, you know, once a week, every every two days, every three days, it's not it's not so it's not so good looking. It's not as easy. It's either too hard or it's a little skinny. Strengths, which means again, you know, there's either a lot of spasticity and um, kind of constriction, or it's coming through this plaque that this is obstructed and this skinny bone movement is coming through. And again, I know you may not feel very comfortable talking about this, but it's really important for us to start owning this part of our body because that's, that's really a center. So, so that can be happening and that is not healthy either. Sometimes, you know, constipation is so prevalent, really. And when I, when I take a history of my patients and there are all these, um, you know, high blood pressure and headache and skin problems and joint, joint problems and, and hot flashes for women and all these stagnation kind of toxicity-like symptoms, eight out of ten will have constipation, if not more. And, you know, and the two out of the ten will have probably something like this, that it's coming through, but it's not, it's not clear on the sides of the colon. How are you doing there? We'll get to that. That's where the magic is. I'll leave you hanging until next month. <laughs> no, I won't. But um, are you, like, do you feel a little overwhelmed? Or do you feel like, uh, it's good to know and I want to do something about it? Yeah. Is anybody overwhelmed? No. No? Oh, beautiful. Great. Diarrhea, you know, besides if you eat something, spoiled food, or if you have a stomach bug, which is related to that, um, and we put that aside because it's a different story. By the way, if that happens to you, activated charcoal is the best thing for that. Just get activated charcoal, and take about 500 milligrams three times a day or every two or three hours. Yes, Walgreens has it. Yeah, Walgreens, yeah. 
And it's great to travel with, really, to have on your trip. It binds the toxins so in the colon. Charcoal yes, well. activated charcoal. Yeah, it binds the toxins, whether it's from the virus or from the food. Binds the toxin. Take it to Mexico. <laughs> and <laughs> it actually looks like a cup. It's a capsule that has black powder in it. Just a charcoal. At least 500 TID. Yes. Do you have my diarrhea? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So I'll go back to those two. So there's a diarrhea that's specifically related to, to those. Okay? So we can take care of that. That's very easy. That's acute. Usually acute is easy to take care of, especially with um, <coughs> natural medicine. And then there is this chronic, I won't even call it diarrhea, but it's almost like that irritation of the colon where the stool either is very frequent or it's, it's immediately after every meal. Like, so you start eating, and all of a sudden you have to go to the bathroom, and it's kind of loose. Um, or it's once a day, kind of like diarrhea, really loose diarrhea. And it's, it's part of, so either there is a trigger, and the trigger very often is some kind of allergen. And we'll, we'll go back to that when we talk about the limb and some kind of trigger as far as um, the al food allergies. Or there is constipation as an underlying problem and the diarrhea just happens as a result. So let's say you have impaction over here and you have impaction over here and this is kind of blocked. It's, the stool cannot come through but the the colon is still trying, it's still trying to protect you and get it out and it moves the muscles and it kind of liquefies or keeps the stool liquefied to move it through as a, as a diarrhea. <laughs>